Now you can buy these points and condensers at your Honda dealer, but if you want them cheaper, you can go to DrayTV.com and buy aftermarket units and they work just as good. So I'm going to start by reinstalling the condenser, but first of all, I'm going to put on the felt from the other condenser, just simply insert it in this groove. If the groove isn't big enough, just expand it with your pliers. Then stick her back in and then just squeeze the claws here and it's going to be in there. Now to stick the condenser back in, just simply grab it like this, insert it into its place here and then just tighten up the screw that goes here. Next you're going to have three wires that will be soldered to the condenser. You have one going out to the ignition coil. This one comes from the primary coil over here. And then you've got this third wire that goes to the points. You can tie all of these three together and just clamp it on the condenser and then solder it. Tie it all three wires together. I'm just going to push down the clamps on the condenser. So I've got all three wires clamped onto the condenser and they're ready to be soldered. And I made sure I kept a good distance between the wires and the outside of the condenser. Now I'm going to add a bit of flux on these wires. Even though there's a little bit of flux in the solder that I'm using, I'm still going to do it to make sure that it sticks on there really, really good. And what I'm using today for this is electrical Rosencore solder. So now it's ready to be soldered on. What you want to solder is just this clip here onto the wires, not the top one. So heat up your gun really, really good. Heat up the tip there a bit before you tin it with your solder. You want to heat it really good so the solder gets right into the wires. If you put too much initially, you can always remove the solder later. Just by going like this. You might want to wear safety glasses doing this. If you're having a hard time doing this, give your soldering gun a break because on this one here it says that you use it for one minute and you give it a four minute break. Because if you keep going you can burn out your soldering gun. So I've got it all soldered there and it's far away from the exterior of the condenser and all the wires are tight. Now we're ready to install the points and for this just loosen the nut on the points a bit. Don't take it all off. So now what you need to do is insert the wire that goes on the points in behind the flat washer here. Do not put the wire on the metal of the points. There's two pieces of plastic here that prevent it from shorting. So just put it in like this, then tighten up the nut. Now just insert the points into the proper holes. Then install the little screw that goes here, but don't tighten it down all the way. I'm just going to leave it loose like this for now. Because I'm going to need to adjust the points later on once the flywheel's back on. Now you can make sure that this wire here is tucked down out of the way from the flywheel and everything else. Make sure that all the wires are out of the way of the flywheel. So just tuck them out of the way. I've tucked the points wire in behind the felt. Now there's a little packet of grease that came with the points and we're going to put some of that grease onto the felt here and what that does is it keeps the points lubricated, the bottom part of the points so that they don't wear out and go out of adjustment. So I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit, not much because you don't want it to get inside the points here, that would cause problems. So just grease it up a bit. And I'm also going to put a bit of grease inside the flywheel here on the lobe because that's going to hit the felt and the points and keep everything nice and smooth. So you don't need to go too crazy, just put a film on there. 
so at this point I'm ready to put the flywheel back on. What you want to do is line up the keyhole in the flywheel to the key on the crankshaft over here. And it's important before you put the flywheel on that you've got the points adjusted all the way up like this because if this is too down, this here is going to hit the flywheel and prevent you from putting it in properly. You'll know that you've got it in right once it's locked in and the engine turns with the flywheel. Next, just insert the flywheel nut back on. It's a 17 millimeter nut. So now that you've got the flywheel on, everything's on, it's time to adjust the points now. Now to adjust the points, you need to look into the flywheel as you turn forward like this. So what I'm going to do is loosen the screw that holds the points and then put my screwdriver in here. I'm going to keep the screw snug so when I adjust it it stays there and then open up the points by either going down or shut them by going up. I'm just going to open them slightly like this and what you want to do is have them set at approximately 20 thousandths of an inch on your feeler gauge. So you can see now how they're going to open at their maximum and I'm going to grab my feeler gauge and show you the space between the gaps. So I found the smaller feeler gauge that I had in my toolbox and I'm going to insert it in between the points and it goes in there just nice and snug not tight not too loose. That's how you know you've got it set right. Now that I know I've got my points set properly I'm just going to go and make sure that the screw here is properly tightened and then turn the engine a couple times to make sure that everything's still working and you can see they're opening and closing. And that's what you want. After you do a lot of these, you're going to be able to do it by eye. You're not going to need to use the feeler gauge. Before you put the flywheel cover back on, take the plug out, ground it to the engine with the switch on, and check for spark. And what you want is some nice spark like that.